The current economic crisis is the result of real estate speculation. In other words, it is the result of people buying houses not in order to live in them, but because they hope to sell them at a profit. Many people will say that that is the American way. But there have always been Americans who did not agree. One does not sell the land a man walks upon. Crazy Horse, 1875. Whenever there is, in any country, uncultivated land and unemployed poor, it is clear that the laws of property have been so far extended as to violate natural rights. The earth is given as a common stock for man to labor and live on. Thomas Jefferson, 1785. During the Great Depression, many people could not pay their rent, and landlords often sent their goons to evict them. The landlord's men would carry out the tenant's furniture, change the locks, and leave the tenants on the street. until neighbors came by and offered to help. The neighbors would break the locks and carry people's furniture back inside. Such eviction resistance often resulted in people keeping their homes. But sometimes resistance led to riots. And these struggles, in turn, led to social reforms such as public housing and rent control. Roosevelt's New Deal was, in fact, the result of a militant mass movement of ordinary citizens. Is such a movement possible today? Mary Trody wears a picture of her son on her chest and her whole multiracial family on her back. Twelve of them. Four generations of the Trody family live together in a little house owned by Mary Trody's mother. When her husband lost his job, 
Mary became the sole breadwinner, delivering papers out of the family truck. So Mary had to pay for gas and insurance, and so she had to take a second mortgage against the value of that house. One day, Mary came home to find a three-day notice of eviction taped to her door. That Friday, the Trodies moved out. That weekend, the Trodies slept in the family truck. But Mary was not a victim. Mary was a member of Lyft, low-income families fighting together. The van had been used in voter registration drives. So Mary knew to go to Lyft with her problem. And Lyft, in turn, referred her to take back the land, a group that fights for the rights of homeless people. At 8 a.m. on Monday morning, three days after the eviction, Mary showed up at her house to find that activists and neighbors were already there. I'm giving you back your house, Mary. For Mary, it was a wonderful feeling. But soon the police showed up, along with a barracuda from the banks. A tense standoff ensued. Could you get your son out of there? We don't want to arrest a minor. But the boy would not leave his home. In the end, it was the police who backed off and drove away. The Trodies moved back into that house and they're still there today. Twelve thousand vacant homes in Detroit. Sixteen thousand vacant properties in Baltimore. Four thousand seven hundred foreclosures in Riverside County, California in 2008 alone. This is a call to action. This land is your land.